There's another kind of organization that you see in humans, which is recall what I said before, that most of the visual field gets input from each eye. Okay, we segregate by hemisphere by visual field, but each of those visual fields is getting input from each eye. Well, it turns out that in humans and macaques, and lots, but not all, uh, of mammals, um, that, that, that information from eye of origin is segregated in the cortex as well. And so what you see, this is now when you present um, stimuli through one eye, you basically just lie in the scanner with one eye open and then the other eye open and you have flickering garbage all over the visual field. So party for the whole visual cortex, stuff happening everywhere, look through one eye, look through the other eye. The red is the input from one eye, the blue is the input from the other eye. So that shows you that on top of all this organization with retinotopy and orientation segregation, you also have different differential inputs from eye of origin in one layer of the cortex. Right after this stage, that information converges on common cells and you have binocular responses. But at this part of the visual system, um, the, it's segregated. Um, okay, so I'm gonna skip this. And this is an amazing study where this was shown actually in post-mortem human brains. So this is the calcarin sulcus of a person looking on the inside like that. And what happened was this person um, lost an eye. Uh, um, uh, that's right, lost an eye shortly before death. This person, I believe, had some kind of terminal cancer um, and agreed to brain donation after death. That person's brain was collected after they died, and um, this stain that you see here is something called cytochrome oxidase that shows where there is recent metabolic activity. And so what you see very literally right across primary visual cortex in this postmortem sample is segregation from eye of input. The dark bits are the bits that were recently metabolically active because they got input from the surviving eye. The bits in between were not metabolically active because those are the bits that used to have input only from the eye that was now gone. It's kind of horrifying, but vivid, yeah? Everybody get that? So that's called ocular dominance columns. Now, these are just properties that you will hear about of primary visual cortex. They're much studied, they're developmental. Um, how you wire them up in development is a topic of great interest to many people. It's all very cool. But there's a big mystery because nobody really knows why we have columnar organization of either orientation or ocular dominance. And there's several species with perfectly good, mammalian species with perfectly good vision that don't have them. <laughs> Uh, so they're facts of, of the human brain and macaque brains and lots of brains, but, but they're not universal and they're probably not computationally necessary. Okay, bottom line of all of this is there's lots of different kinds of functional organization all on top of each other in primary visual cortex. There's retinotopy, there's orientation maps, and there's um, ocular dominance columns or stripes. Okay, so this is a general property of the cortex that you get spatial organization in which nearby neurons have similar functional properties. You see that all over the cortex, the functional properties are different, but the spatial organization of cortex is a, um, is a very general property, okay?